I wanted to give a little lesson here about threshold work. Threshold work is teaching your dog to respect doorway threshold boundaries. That could be the crate door, it could be the back door, it could be the front door, it could be the door getting in and out of your automobile. What I want is to teach dogs, you're not allowed to just go bursting through doorway thresholds. I want a little bit of self-control and I want you to wait for me to allow you to cross through the threshold. There's a number of reasons why I do this work with dogs. First and foremost, I don't want any dog in my possession thinking it can just charge right out the door. That could be your life if you do that and there's a busy street out there. Um, but it also builds focus, okay? It's just another exercise I do where the dog is defaulting to me, waiting on me. One of the best things you can do is have your dog wait on you, you know, instead of the other way around. But it's also a leadership exercise, okay? I'm setting a boundary here. I'm, set, I'm establishing a rule. You cannot charge through doorways. Nor can you crowd my personal space at doorway thresholds. When I'm right here at a door, I don't want a dog right here. I want the dog back here waiting patiently for me to tell the dog it's okay to come through. Why do I want that? Why do I want compliance at this doorway and then compliance at this doorway? Because for an untrained dog that tends to go bonkers the second it goes outside and it goes from being at a two to like a 15 on a scale of one to 10, I don't want that. Overstimulation, excitability is the enemy to good behavior and obedience training. If a dog can't focus on me because it's so highly and easily distracted by everything it smells, everything it hears, everything it sees, anything that moves, how am I gonna work with that dog? Especially if it's so overstimulated by that stuff that it doesn't care about treats. Well, one of the things that I do is I wanna bring that energy level down a little bit or I don't ever want it to get to that point to begin with. So if you just fling open the door and the dog goes charging out of the crate and then runs at 100 miles an hour to the door and jumps on it and scratching it and barking at you, come on, get over here, let me outside. You are setting a tone before you even take that walk that the dog is in charge, it's at a 10, right? It's just maxed out with overstimulation. And so as soon as you open the door, the dog is completely out of your control. And once you're in that place, it's very difficult to bring a, the dog back under your control. Um, especially if you don't know how to properly apply pressure on a dog to get that, to regain that type of focus and control. It's so much better to start off with it and to maintain it throughout your walk or your obedience session and to be able to reward it the entire time. And so, Here's how I do doorway threshold work. I tell, this is also teaching the dog the command wait, which just means stop your forward motion. So I'm gonna tell him wait as I start to open the door. If there's any forward motion, I'm just gonna close the door and wait. You know, I'm gonna tell him no as I close the door and I'm gonna repeat the command, wait. Then I'm gonna open the door again. He's gonna try and stick his head out. Nope, wait, then I'm gonna do it again. You have to understand through this repetitive practice is where dogs get good. What you don't want to do is yell at the dog, no, wait, like if you, you can't get frustrated when you're doing this. It requires patience for a dog to learn. When Miss Newman screamed at me for not getting the algebra problem right my freshman year in high school, it did not help me get it right. It just made me even more flustered and more incapable of getting the algebra problem right. So no yelling, no harsh tone, Always, always, always around dogs, calm energy. Calm, but assertive. You do not want passive energy around a big, strong pit bull. You want calm, assertive energy. Assertive energy is disallowing you to do something until I say it's okay, <laughs> right? That's an excellent leadership exercise to put a dog in its place and to teach the dog, you're down here, I'm up here. 
You know, you are at the bottom of the totem pole in our family, beneath the children. And when a dog knows that that's its place, you know what it does? It goes, oh my gosh, I feel so much better now being down here at the bottom. I don't have to figure anything out. I've got a human that's going to tell me what to do at all times, that's going to guide me and lead me and advocate for me. And because I know that, and because that's the way it is with this human, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, no matter what's around us, the human's always the same, calm and assertive, guiding me, leading me, telling me what to do. I relax. So, doorway threshold work. I'm going to close this door entirely for safety reasons. I'm never going to let any brand new dog that I don't know out of a crate without making sure that the door to the outside is latched, that it cannot open. Just in case the dog slips past me and it's a dog that wants to charge to the door, push it open, run out, and never come back. It's the sum of all my fears. I'm never going to allow that. So the dog has to wait, right? Now, while the dog is still in the crate, the tools go on, the leash goes on. I know I have complete control over the dog before it even comes out. That's the idea. Wait. Now we've already done a little bit of this. I've had him for 24 hours now. So he's, you know, at first this dog just wanted to push right past me. Now, as you see, you know, every time he starts to stick his nose out, I'm putting spatial pressure on him. That's all I'm doing. That is spatial pressure. And it's a language that every dog handler should learn to speak very well because it is the universal language that all dogs use, really that all, all creatures use, period, to communicate. Back up, you know? If I want to bring a dog to me, I'm going to back away from the dog, you know, and encourage it. But if I want a dog to back up, I'm going to encroach into its personal space and put spatial pressure on that dog. That in and of itself is another excellent leadership exercise where you're teaching the dog, hey buddy, I'm in charge here, not you. The more you reinforce the idea that you're in charge at all times, the more you have a calm, compliant dog that feels good. It's when you, when you just let your dog do whatever it wants, the more of a free-for-all you give the dog, the more anxious the dog's going to become, good boy, because they're not capable of running a human household. They're not even capable of running themselves. They have to be told what to do in order to get by in a human world, right? That's why we got so many dogs in shelters. It's, it's no, 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 good boy. So that time I used spatial pressure and leash pressure to back him up. And I also used a verbal marker, told him no. Now did you, did you hear me yell? Did you hear me go, no, of course not. All I did is go, nope, nope, nope. That's how I'm gonna say no to this dog for the entirety of his time with me because I don't ever wanna have to get worked up and yell. And it's counterproductive anyway because dogs don't speak that language of human emotional charged energy. It just confuses them and creates anxiety. It's totally unnecessary. We can communicate clearly by being calm and assertive and using a system of rewards and corrections. So now I'm gonna back away from the crate. He's still not allowed to come out, right? But I'm ready for him to try, and I'm gonna put spatial pressure on him when he does, just to let him know, hey, I haven't released you yet. Just because I back away doesn't mean it's time for you to walk out. What I want is compliance. I want to be able to back away and not have that forward motion. And when I get it and he looks at me, very good. Now I'm going to release him. Diesel. Good boy. Very good boy. Now, am I petting him? Am I getting him all riled up? My hands on him, getting him to be all overstimulated right before we go outside? No way. I'm just keeping my calm and assertive energy, right? So I'm going to let him take a drink there, and then I'm going to do the same thing at this doorway here, okay? Now, one thing that makes this difficult for a lot of owners, they try and keep the dog from going through by stopping the dog here. That's not enough. You gotta back the dog up to where it's like three or four feet from the door to give yourself a margin of error because the dog's not perfect. You're gonna have to repeat this exercise. So, every time he starts to go towards that door when I go to open it, I'm just gonna back him up. And once he stays back and he stops trying to fight me and get past me to get outside, that's when I'm going to let him outside. So he's going to learn, hey, the way to get what you want is to stop trying to, to force it. Just give me your attention and you're going to get it. It's coming, buddy. Good boy.
Good. Diesel. Very good dog. And now, of course, you see, I'm not going to let him make a beeline out the door. If that happens, I'm going to stop that with my spatial pressure on the leash. I want calm energy, polite energy. Now we're going to take a break. We're not going to start our walk until he pees and poops. And the reason why is because a lot of people, they take their dog on a walk for the entire purpose of having it pee and poop. And the dog learns that very quickly, and the dog learns like, oh, as soon as I pee and poop, the walk is over, I have to go home, so they hold on to it. It's much better to do that business and then take the walk, and the dog starts becoming conditioned to this new reality where, as soon as I relieve myself, the fun begins instead of it ending. So you'll find a dog that runs outside and poops and pees like a bat, and then you take your walk. And you don't have to worry about you know, the dog, well, he's tracking, he's marking, does it need to go to the bathroom? No, it doesn't. It needs to keep its focus on you. We already went to the bathroom. 